Hi, this is your host of Lim Bhartia and welcome to a brand new episode of our series TFI topic of the month aka T3M and this month's topic is security and compliance and my next guest to discuss this topic is Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of Reckon. Rob, it's great to have you on the show to talk about security today. Swap, it's a pleasure. Uh, I'm really excited. Security is a critical thing for people to consider in their infrastructure. Right. I remember the days uh, when security used to have been after thought then uh, before pandemic. We start seeing a lot of uh, sessions on security. Now they are dedicated days for security. The whole shift that movement, uh, zero trust. Uh, a lot of things are changing to kind of make sure that security is not an afterthought. It's not someone else's problem. It's kind of everyone's problem. Uh, but if I ask you, since you do deal with not only, uh, of course, the whole ecosystem, but you have your own customer base, what kind of changes you're seeing when it comes to security in the cloud-centric cloud world? Cloud One of the things that we see um, is a more concern on how systems are getting built behind the scenes and, and not just creating an assumption that because you're using Kubernetes or you're using containers or you're using a third-party service, um, there's more scrutiny, scrutiny in the idea of the whole environment for the system. And I think that that's really valid. It's um, important for companies not to assume that you know, any part of their supply chain is, is secure uh, by default. They actually need to, they, ha they have to have a degree of ownership in um, all of the components of their system. And so I, I think that's a really valuable change that we've been seeing. Security is not an end game, it's not a product, it's a process. So as much as we are working towards improving security, we continue to hear about breaches. Can you talk about what are some of the major security concerns that are still there? I mean, just we can reflect on some of the recent news items around security. Uh, so what do you think, which is still, you know, a major concern there? A lot of times the security things that we see result from people who haven't um, really well automated processes or, or, or allow things to drift away uh, from doing things in a um, repeatable routine configuration way. And so, you know, what we see here is even though we're, we're very excited, you know, about industry, we are very excited about CI, CD systems, and automation and GitOps, right? You can go on and on about all these pieces. Um, it is very easy for us to run into a time when somebody has bypassed that process to give themselves access or have an exception and then didn't automate around that exception or didn't follow a dev test prod process. And they end up with things in production that should never have reached production. Uh, and that is a really significant fault in uh, how we think about security. So, you know, the, only, the systems only work if you uh, ensure that you're, you're running them in a consistent way. As soon as you allow that those inconsistency and exceptions to come in, uh, you're opening yourself up for risk. Uh, and that's, that's going to be true in every environment. It's humans are, are ultimately, you know, the source of a lot of these, these faults. Sometimes, you know, the, 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 the threats that we see in the traditional IT space are also the same in the in the in the cloud native or cloud centric world as well. If I ask you, what are the new threat vectors or new th uh, attack vectors that should be a concern for organization? Let's say zombie APIs is a good example there. Without a doubt, you know that we've made it so easy to create new infrastructure and 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 build and and deploy things. I think zombie APIs are a really good example. We're seeing this wave of enthusiasm around platform engineering and, and developer portals, which have, you know, I'm going to be creating, you know, potentially zombie environments and test labs and developer, you know, any anytime you have that those environments, you've improved access and made things easier. You also run the risk that you're creating more attack vectors for people to enter in. Um, and so I, I think those are really significant uh, components for people to think through. It's always a risk that um, you're going to have, you know, credential leaks or people checking credentials into code bases or uh, putting, you know, sensitive credentials into one environment because they're trying to access another environment. Um, I think, you know, we really, we've done a really good job of building better secrets management and injecting, you know, making it possible to inject secrets into systems. 
but we've also meant that we're putting a lot of secrets into shared locations and, and injecting them automatically into infrastructure for people. Um, and so I think we need to be careful that when we build these systems and they're injecting secrets, that you know we're also ensuring that the systems that do that injection have the security and the checks and balances that we need in them, right? Otherwise, you could spin up environments, add in credentials, and all of a sudden you're off to the races with you know with privileged credentials. Um, so it's it's you know a degree of empowerment tends to let people forget what all that goes into that automation and what's being built for them without their, them thinking about it. Uh, and it's very easy for something like that to slip through the cracks. Um, and so we, we need to be careful with, with where those things go. Um, uh, and what, just as a, as a point of recommendation, one of the things to me for people to think about is what I would call the half-life of any environment. Um, and along those lines, you know, it's it's a really good idea if you're if you've been automating things to make them very easy to get. It's worth remembering to automate to make them automatically get destroyed or torn down. So the easier it is to build an environment, the easier it should be to tear it down. And if you're not looking at both sides of that equation, you're potentially leaving yourself open to a zombie environment or a zombie API that sticks around and and people aren't even aware that it's there. So shorter, easy to build, fast to tear down. Very important. How much adoption of practices like you know zero trust, DevSecOps, uh, you are seeing there today? So we see quite a bit. We see adoption and interest very high. Um, definitely for things like improved. When I think of shift left, I think of developer empowerment, but I also think of improved security postures of systems throughout their life cycle. And so we definitely see uh, in our customer base and throughout the industry better and better work done earlier and earlier in the process. So, you know, um, my favorite example of this for our customer base is, you know, most of our customers have been moving into a process to fully build uh, deployment images inside of their CI CD pipelines. So that means secured, patched, and they can then replace that whole image. That to me is shifting left. So you've gone from doing a whole bunch of security configuration and validation work, you know, in when the system is installed and after 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 install and uh, post deployment to the point where you're actually doing it in the CI CD pipeline. That type of, of enhancement um, it gives them a lot better performance, but it also is a much stronger security state. Uh, zero trust, uh, we see customers getting much more um, aggressive about uh, properly building TLS infrastructure and certificates and managing their certificate infrastructure, which is a key piece of doing zero trust well. Um, I wish I saw that moving faster. There's a lot of pieces in like Secure Boot um, where the discipline needed to do that type of work, zero trust is similar. The discipline needed to do zero trust um, requires a lot of confidence in your, in your tooling. And so our customers are pulling that in but it's very hard to win in those in those games if you're not confident in your automation. And that's a place where I would just tell, tell people, if, if you're not dealing with automation that's reliable, if reliable isn't the first test for your automation, then you're gonna have trouble with zero trust. It's the thing that Rackham customers really turn to us for. Um, you know, even before performance, even before flexibility, the reliability of automation is actually the number one driver. And that's get much more serious about the security, lets them get much more serious about reusing and repeating, apply, rinse, repeat processes, immutable infrastructure. All of those healthy, good security disciplines come out of reliability. Earlier, we recorded an episode on cost cutting uh, and cost efficiency. Do you think there will be any impact on security teams or the budgets for CISOs? If yes, uh, what does it mean? Uh, how will that impact security? Or no, security is something which is untouched by those cuts. I, I wish I had good news on this one. Um, it's without a doubt going to impact security teams, um, and it's going to impact security. Um, the, you know, there's just no doubt that as you look across um, for savings inside of an organization, all companies are going to try and figure out ways they can get the same people to do a little bit more work. Um, 
and that's just going to going to hit security just like everything else. Um, and unfortunately, those those uh, dips do impact security, right? Lack of discipline, something that didn't get done, something that got done a little bit more slowly than it otherwise would have gotten done, are all all vulnerability vectors um, for organizations. Uh, so sadly, yeah, cost cutting is going to impact security posture. And the only thing I can tell you, and this is going to sound very shift left of me, um, is that make sure that you're embedding security into your native processes, into your regular processes. When you shift security left, it does have the benefit of ensuring the security can't be pulled out or is much harder to pull out of a process because it's embedded in the process. Um, and companies really need to take that as a posture, do the work, do the work with security in mind first, um, because there is always the risk that that's, that's gonna be pulled out or compromised. Um, and it really does have very high ROI. Uh, if, you embed, if you embed security into the automation you're building, if you make sure that you can quickly scan, reset, and, and rebuild an environment, you'll find that um, a lot of the security vectors disappear on their own. And as a benefit to the CISOs, if you're a CISO watching this, if your ops and automation teams are better at building, rebuilding, and resetting environments, then the posture of the systems actually, your, your, your threat posture is, is better. So you're, you're much less vulnerable if you are doing regular um, patching, regular rebuilds, if, if your system is much more, is more dynamic, um, it gives you a better posture. And then you can maybe do, get, do, buy, do better with fewer people or have those people focused on more important security concerns. Now let's talk about REC and, and uh, uh, how are REC and solutions either directly helping with security or like sometimes you have to make things so easy, so simple that a security doesn't kind of crop up, creep up and become a concern. So whichever way your solutions help customers, let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, RackN is helping our customers gain control of their infrastructure, whether it's bare metal, virtual, cloud, um, That that's the fundamental piece. And you know, a lot of that control ends up being a security concern and helping address security issues right at the start. So a lot of what we do is we help people's infrastructure become more reliable. If it's more reliable, you can add in automation, you can run your automation more regularly, you can do resets and rebuilds in places where you might not have done those processes before. Um, all of those things dramatically improve the security outlook for the systems that people are trying to, to control. We're also incredibly good at helping our customers do dev test prod fidelity. And that allows them to really have confidence that when they test something in development, it's going to work in their test environments. It's going to make it into their test environments or production environments without having manual changes you know, the reality is a lot of the security issues we see are not introduced in the system on purpose. They're actually introduced because we have a lot of variance or manual steps or human configurations in the systems. And what we do at RackN is we work to eliminate the need for those types of variations and human interventions. So uh, our customers' dev test prod environments are very similar. Our site to site variation for customers is incredibly low. Our infrastructure changes by type of infrastructure is incredibly low. All of those things mean that uh, our customers write and use automation that they don't have to have a lot of changes to, a lot of variance to, a lot of human touch to. Um, and all of those things create a much more uniform operating environment that is then easier to secure. So. It all fits together as one piece. And if you can make all those things work together, then you know you can actually focus on the high value security aspects that need to get done and stop worrying more about you know, who has access to your gear, do they have the right certificates, do they can they rotate a patch, can they apply a patch quickly? Um, unfortunately, so many customers uh, used to spend a lot of time just chasing toil, you know, applying patches, fixing things, checking on systems, doing audits, all of that work, if you can eliminate it, translates directly into free time to do high value activities uh, that really make a difference.
what advice do you have for companies to improve their security posture? As you said, security is not strictly about security. There are so many things that can create a lot of you know security risks there. I think treating security um, as a as a service, not you know as a SaaS where you're you're hiring it, but actually having a service mindset in building security, right? What you're really looking to do is improve the user experience in things. Um, and we too often look at security as an add-on that we have to add into a system rather than a benefit for how the systems operate. And I think looking at security as you know, ensuring that people have access, even more than ensuring that people don't have access, um, that, that shift in mindset actually becomes a much more um, friendly approach to how these things work, right? We're, we're making sure that you have access to the systems and we're, you know, in that sense, limiting it to everybody else. But the more we do the right thing from that perspective with a sort of services mindset, service-oriented mindset, then the more people will embrace security practices, it removes the overhead. Uh, thinking that security is way too often burdened with. Rob, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about, uh, of course, security uh, today. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. Thanks.